Hey there, future gold prospectors. Did you know that your old electronics are more than just outdated gadgets? They're like tiny treasure chests, hiding valuable metals like gold. It's true. Gold is used in circuit boards and connectors because it's an excellent conductor of electricity and resists corrosion. Recovering this gold is not only a fascinating scientific process, but can also be financially rewarding. So put on your explorer hats as we embark on this exciting journey of turning e-waste into gold. But before we dive in, remember that safety is our top priority. We'll be working with chemicals, so it's crucial to take precautions and protect ourselves. In the next section, we'll gear up with the proper safety equipment before we start extracting gold. Let's get those safety goggles ready. Safety is paramount when working with chemicals. Remember, we're dealing with acids, and they can be dangerous if not handled properly. So before we even think about touching those electronics, let's suit up like the responsible scientist we are. First and foremost, we need a pair of sturdy safety goggles to protect our eyes from splashes. Next, slip on some thick, chemical-resistant gloves to shield our hands. And don't forget a respirator mask to prevent inhaling any harmful fumes. Trust me, your lungs will thank you later. Always work in a well-ventilated area, preferably outdoors or near an open window. This will help disperse any fumes quickly and keep the air fresh. Remember, safety is not a suggestion. It's a must. Now that we're all geared up, let's move on to gathering the necessary materials for our gold recovery mission. Now that we're all decked out in our safety gear, let's gather the tools we'll need to extract that precious gold. Don't worry, it's not as complicated as it sounds. First, we'll need some basic chemistry equipment, glass beakers and flasks to hold our solutions, a glass stirring rod for mixing, and a funnel and filter paper for separating the gold later on. These are readily available online or at your local science supply store. Next, we'll need some chemicals, hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide. These chemicals work together to dissolve the metal surrounding the gold, freeing it from the circuit boards. We'll talk more about how to handle these chemicals safely when we get to that step. Finally, we'll need a heat source, like a hot plate, to evaporate the liquid and leave us with pure gold. Once we have all our tools and equipment ready, we can start disassembling those electronics and begin our gold recovery adventure. All right, treasure hunters, let's get our hands dirty, with gloves on, of course. The first step in our gold recovery process is to carefully dismantle our electronic devices and collect the gold-laden components. Start by removing any plastic casings, screws, or other parts that are not part of the circuit boards. You can use a screwdriver, pliers, or even just your hands for this. Remember to be gentle and avoid damaging the circuit boards themselves. Once you have the circuit boards exposed, focus on the gold-plated components. Look for gold connectors, pins, and contact points. These are the parts that contain the highest concentration of gold. You can use wire cutters to carefully snip off these gold-plated components and collect them in a separate container. Remember, we're after the gold, so be meticulous in your search. Once you have a good amount of gold-plated components, we can move on to the next step, dissolving the gold using our chemical solution. The acid bath dissolving to concentrate. Now, the real magic begins. With our safety gear on and gold-plated components ready, it's time to introduce our chemical solution, Aqua Regia. Don't let the name intimidate you. It's just a mixture of concentrated nitric acid and hydrochloric acid, optimally in a molar ratio of one to three. Aqua Regia is an extremely corrosive mixture capable of dissolving gold. It's essential to handle it with extreme care, always adding the acid to water slowly never the other way around. The reaction between nitric acid and gold forms gold ions, while hydrochloric acid is then used to react with the gold ions to form tetrachloroorate, three anions, also in solution. The reaction with hydrochloric acid is an equilibrium reaction that favors the formation of tetrachloroorate, the three anions. This reaction results in the removal of gold ions from solution and allows the further oxidation of gold to take place. The appropriate reaction equation is O plus 3 HNO 3 plus 4 HCl gives us AAUCl4 plus 3 NO2 plus H3 O plus plus 2 H2O. Always work in a well-ventilated area or outdoors and wear your respirator mask to avoid inhaling any fumes. 
carefully add your gold-plated components to the Aqua Regia solution and watch as the magic happens. The acid will slowly dissolve the base metals, leaving the gold behind. This process can take several hours or even days, depending on the amount of material you are processing. Once the reaction is complete, you'll be left with a solution containing dissolved gold ions. Now, we need to isolate the gold from this solution, which brings us to our next step. Precipitation Unveiling the gold precipitation from solution With the gold dissolved in our Aqua Regia solution, we now need to coax it out of its liquid disguise. To do this, we'll use a process called selective precipitation. This involves adding a chemical that will react with the gold ions in solution, causing them to solidify and separate from the liquid. The chemical we'll use for this step is called sodium metabisulfite. When added to the Aqua Regia solution, sodium metabisulfite reacts with the gold ions, converting them into metallic gold particles. You'll see the solution turn a cloudy brown as the gold precipitates out. This process can take a few hours, so be patient. Once the precipitation is complete, you should see a brownish sludge settled at the bottom of your beaker. This sludge is mostly metallic gold. We're getting closer to our goal. Capturing the prize filtration and collection. We're in the home stretch now. We've successfully separated the gold from the other metals and precipitated it out of solution. Now we need to collect our golden prize. Remember the funnel and filter paper we gathered earlier? This is where they come in. Carefully set up your funnel with the filter paper and place it over a clean beaker. Slowly pour the solution containing the precipitated gold through the filter paper. The filter paper will trap the solid gold particles, while the now clear liquid, which contains dissolved base metals and other impurities, will pass through. This liquid can be safely disposed of, following proper chemical disposal guidelines. Rinse the filter paper with distilled water a few times to remove any remaining traces of acid or impurities. You should be left with a filter paper containing a brownish residue. That's our gold! Carefully remove the filter paper and place it on a watch glass or a heat-resistant surface. We're almost there. From powder to treasure, drying and melting the gold, the moment we've all been waiting for is finally here. We're about to turn that brownish powder on our filter paper into shiny, solid gold. First, we need to dry our gold powder completely. You can do this by leaving it out in a warm, dry place for a few hours, or by gently heating it on a hot plate. Once the powder is completely dry, it's time to melt it. For this step, we'll need a crucible, a heat-resistant container designed for melting metals. Place the dried gold powder in the crucible and heat it using a butane torch or a propane torch. The gold will melt and fuse together, forming a beautiful molten bead at the bottom of the crucible. Congratulations, you've just recovered gold from electronics. You can now carefully pour the molten gold into a mold to create your desired shape, or let it cool in the crucible and admire its raw beauty. The Refining Touch Achieving higher purity, optional. The gold we've recovered is already quite pure, but if you're aiming for even higher purity, you can take an extra step and refine it further. One common method for refining gold is using a process called inquartation. This involves melting the gold with a specific ratio of silver, which helps remove impurities like copper or platinum. The resulting alloy is then treated with nitric acid, which dissolves the silver and other base metals, leaving behind a higher purity gold. Refining gold to a higher purity requires additional equipment and expertise, so it's best left to experienced professionals. However, even without this final refining step, the gold you've recovered is a testament to your ingenuity and the power of chemistry. A golden recap summary and environmental considerations. We've done it. We've successfully journeyed through the fascinating process of recovering gold from old electronics. From disassembling devices to dissolving, precipitating, and finally, melting the gold, we've witnessed firsthand the transformation of e-waste into a precious metal. Remember, while this process can be rewarding, it's crucial to prioritize safety and environmental responsibility at every step. Always wear proper safety gear handle chemicals with extreme care, and dispose of waste materials responsibly following local regulations. 
By reclaiming gold from electronics, we're not only uncovering hidden treasures but also contributing to a more sustainable future by reducing electronic waste and the need for environmentally harmful gold mining practices. Go for the gold further exploration and learning. This journey into the world of gold recovery is just the beginning. There's a wealth of information available online and in libraries for those who want to delve deeper into the science and art of metal recovery. Explore different methods, experiment with various materials, and connect with other hobbyists and experts to expand your knowledge and skills. Remember, every piece of e-waste holds the potential for treasure. So, put on your explorer hats, prioritize safety, and embark on your own gold recovery adventure.